from this Sprouts parking lot. I don't know where. <laughs> we figured our We're car in is Seattle. in Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> no. uh, New Orleans. Uh. Our son's in Athens. Uh, I'm wearing my uh, my father's tie from 1939, I think. Uh, high school tie. Uh, in honor of Father's Day. He, he was... He was a Capricorn and very stubborn. I'm feeling very stubborn today. Stubborn for a good cause. And I'm concerned about, about that I am not all the time. It's World Refugee Day. Uh, you know, I know I'm very lucky. I anything, but somehow I, somehow I can 1% identify with it. 35 million people for refugees. And that's not counting homeless people. That's just counting people just put. Anyway, so sad. <laughs> I should say... Let's all be grateful today that if, if you have a place where you can... Because you have to write the move as you temporarily will. Temporarily go home as, in anywhere because man has the right to move as he will on the face of the earth. And, uh, that right's not really uh, being exercised too much these days. Anyway... Um, Who helped you tie that tie this morning? Lon helped me tie the tie because I don't know how to tie a tie. I'm a girl. You know, I'm going to go buy some vegetables and be grateful and, and probably stubborn all day thinking of my father. Who was they know who we are at the co-op. They do. Lon's the, <laughs> that guy. Lon's the, they know Lon, the man with, who gets the turtle water. So the turtles famous at the <laughs> co-op. Okay. And Lon's not to watch me. Okay, I'm not going to. I won't do I won't do that all the not that I flounder or anything. I just... No, no. Because I zoom in on your butt. Probably. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, sorry. We're a few minutes late this morning, but not as late as we have been at this time. Oh, here comes Constance again. I've got my bag. Oh. My veggie bag. Oh, we've got a soundtrack today. Oh, yeah, yeah, it makes me want to boogie to, yeah, R&B. Anyway, uh, yesterday we had the Father's Day thing and everything. Uh, if you're my Facebook friend, which you, you, you might be because you're uh, watching at least this initial uh, broadcast this morning, uh, Please check out my Facebook page because uh, our son, Jean-Paul, is in Athens uh, getting ready to speak at the university, but he's uh, uh, sending pictures from the Agora and uh, the Agora Museum, and, and uh, so follow his exploits with us because uh, it looks like he's having a pretty good time. And after this, he'll be off to Paris uh, to speak at the Sorbonne. Okay. Anyway, uh, today is June 20th. And June 20th is a cusp day. Okay. Uh, the June 20th, hang on, because I think I've got, I've got, uh, illustrations here. First of all, we are in the time period between June 11th and July 11th. And uh, let's see, that time period, which is 30 degrees of uh, Gemini to, or 20 degrees Gemini to 20 degrees Cancer, is ruled in the tarot, at least according to, to uh, one way of dividing the tarot cards uh, into uh, uh, calendar dates. Uh, I'm sure you could uh, devise any any number of ways to uh, to allot the time periods of twelve of the sixteen court cards to thirty degree periods. But it's been sort of the magical uh, 
allotment of those time periods that uh, not sure exactly where it began but the Golden Dawn uh, uh, sort of enshrined it in the lore of modern uh, occultism uh, the kings queens and and uh, princes or the knights queens and princes uh, all represent those 12 cards represent uh, 30 degrees of the zodiac but not 30 degrees zodiac signs but 20 degrees of one sign to 20 degrees of another because of the necessity indeed the 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 purpose of the uh, lesser arcana the four suits and the uh, the assignment to elements and how that translates to the zodiac and the uh, elemental uh, signs of uh, uh, fire, water, air, and earth. Uh, but anyway, I'm not going to get into th that today because I just want to leave you with one little simple thing for you to meditate on today. Because in a sense, this is something that, that we all share. So the doesn't doesn't uh, matter what your birthday is, uh, the entire earth, if you will, all of us here are undergoing this uh, time period of 20 degrees of Gemini to 20 degrees of, of Cancer. And that is represented anyway by the court card, the Queen of Cups. And uh, I'm sure you're seeing this backwards, but uh, you'll see that the Queen of Cups is 20 degrees Gemini to 20 degrees uh, uh, Cancer. And you'll see the approximate dates there, June 11th to July the 11th, which is my birthday. Now, three small cards. Each of the small cards, the twos through tens of each of the suits represent 10 degree periods of the zodiac. So three small cards live inside the Queen of Cups. Now you'd think because it's cups, they would be th three small card cups. But because we're not dealing with clean zodiac signs, but 20 degrees of one sign to 20 degrees of another, the three court cards are only two-thirds cups. This rulership backs up and picks up the last 10 degrees of the previous sign. So the three small cards that live inside the Queen of Cups are the Ten of Swords. From the Gemini ness, swords, Gemini air, last 10 degrees of Gemini, and then the two, then the three of cups. Okay, so the ten of swords, the two of cups, and the three of cups live inside. The Queen of Cups. I'm trying to put my cards here so they don't. The Ten of Swords, the official name of it is Bummer! <laughs> now, it, it, I'm sure you're seeing this backwards, but it's Ruin. Okay. And the planetary uh, allotment to that, th those degrees of Gemini is the sun. Now there's nothing wrong with the sun in Gemini. It's got all, this card's got all sorts of help from its uh, zodiacal planetary assignment. But think about it. If you were the suit of the mind, 
where all your anxiety, where all of your tortured thoughts and nightmares, of all of your mental bummers dwell, still you're trying to think yourself into, you're trying to think about your existence rather than live it. And when you get all the way down the tree of life to number 10, and the only thing you've got left to do is drip down, you don't want to relinquish your hold on your mind's point of view of your self-identity. When you... Like, like the Buddha's uh, uh, first big awakening was, gee, when you think about it, this, the world is just fucked. And it makes me sorrowful. Okay. Anyway, the Ten of Swords, you're usually not happy when the Ten of Swords pops up. Uh, but, because uh, in a sense, you're, you're almost at a point of, oh, I give up. Okay. Now I'm going to read about the Ten of Swords here. Hang on for a second. Here's what Crowley has to say about the Ten of Swords. Let's see here. The number 10. Malkuth, as always, represents the culmination of the unmitigated energy of the idea. It shows reason run mad. Ramshackle, riot of soulless mechanism. It represents the logic of lunatics. Have you watched the news this morning or for the last five years. It represents the logic of lunatics and for the most part of philosophers. <laughs> it's reason divorced from reality. The card is also ruled by the sun in Gemini, but the mercurial airy quality of the sign serves to disperse his rays. This card shows the disruption and the disorder of harmonious and stable energy. The hilts of the swords occupy the positions of the sephira on the tree of life. I'll, I'll pull up an image here in a second. But the points, the points of the swords, one to five and seven to nine, touch and shatter the central sword, number six, which represents the sun, the heart the child of Hokma and Bina. So the tenth sword is also in splinters. It is the ruin of the intellect and even of all mental and moral qualities. Then he goes on to talk about the Yi Ching, uh, Saul and Gemini and the Yi Ching. But I wanted to just uh, share that much of the Ten of Swords. Now, re remember that represents what's passing away, because this is the cusp day. This is the last day of that. And it is the first day of the Two of Cups. Love. Now, if you are attuned to those aspects of your life and your existence at this time, whether you're 
perfectly happy, uh, terribly depressed, and anywhere in between. If you can identify, locate, pinpoint, focus on that which in you, in your life, in the momentum of your existence here in 2023, that you could easily represent as that Ten of Swords, then this is what's in store. When you're at a point of saying, oh, I give up. I'm just, if you're at that point, be of good cheer. The Two of Cups represents June 21st, generally. So probably half the world is moving into this already. And it goes all the way to July 1st, which is the three. Uh, or the next 10 degrees will be the Three of Cups, which is abundance, okay? It's not only love, but it's the, it's the, <laughs> it's, it's enough pizza after, <laughs> after, no, it's a wonderful, nourishing uh, 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 consumption, nourishment of that, of that love coming up. So let me read what Crowley has to say about the Two of Cups. Love. The Two always represents the word and the will. Okay, then. What? Okay. Two there on the Tree of Life. Here's a backwards Tree of Life. But there's the Two right there. Okay, that's the Logos. That's uh, uh, Wisdom. That's also, the Logos is the Word. Okay. Uh, as if the, the number one is the, the idea, number two is the idea expressed as a word, and number three is the ear that can hear that word. Schrodinger's cat. Okay. The two always represents the word and the will. It is the first manifestation. When Crowley talks about uh, uh, the attributes of the cards, meanings of the, the cards, uh, the, the ace, in this case, it would be the ace of cups. The ace of cups, even though the suit of cups is water and it's the hay on yod hay vav hay, it is so, the ace is so subtle, it's only the tendency toward water. It's only the tendency uh, toward the, the hay final. Uh, it doesn't actually manifest, just like an idea doesn't manifest until you say, idea! That number two is where we actually get the idea, in this case, of water. The ace of, of cups is the tendency of water, the root of, of water, the impulse uh, to waterness. But the two is actually, well, here's water. Water's here. Okay. But I digress. Therefore, the suit of water it must refer to love, which recovers unity from did individuality by mutual annihilation. This card also refers to Venus in Cancer. Cancer is, more than any other, the receptive sign. It is the house of the moon. And in that sign, Jupiter is exalted. God, can you get any better than that? These are superficially the three most friendly of planets. Uh, in the Thoth Tarot, the hieroglyph of the card, which represents two cups in the foreground overflowing upon a calm sea. 
They are fed with lucent water from a lotus floating upon the sea, from which rises another lotus, around whose stem are entwined twin dolphins. The symbolism of the dolphin is very complicated and must be studied in books of reference. But the general idea is that of the royal art. The dolphin is peculiarly sacred to alchemy. The number two, referring to will, this card might really be renamed Lord of Love Under Will. And in the Tarot of Ceremonial Magic, the Lord of Love Under Will is two ice cream sundaes getting ready to be enjoyed. If she can only finish half of hers, I can eat one and a half. It won't go to waste. The card might really be renamed the Lord of Love Under Will, for that is its full and true meaning. It shows the harmony of the male and the female, interpreted in the largest sense. It is perfect and placid harmony, radiating an intensity of joy and ecstasy. Of necessity, the realization of the idea in the four, the four is coming up, as the suit develops, will gradually, gradually diminish the purity of its perfection. So number three is still like icing on the cake, and number four will be like, well, you're sort of overdoing it on the luxurious end of things. And it's, it's getting ready to degenerate into the, the vice end of decadence. So, But right now, it's the two. And that's where I'm going to leave us on that positive end, because that's we're sitting at the threshold. We're entering the pylons of the Two of Cups, and we're putting that Ten of Swords behind us for a while. So I wish you the very best. Uh, and I, in this particular case, I wish you perfect and placid harmony, radiating an intensity of joy and ecstasy, at least until we meet tomorrow for the summer solstice. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will.